Caution, the descending on a 3,000 foot gear violation coming along. Caution, terrain. Yep, just got it. Caution, terrain. Caution. terrain. I'm sitting in the flight deck of the future. This is an experimental Dassault Falcon where Honeywell tests out displays and warning systems to help pilots see what they can't. Eventually, pilots will be able to use their voice to control a plane and even take off and land vertically like flying cars. The point of all this is to make air travel safer and more efficient for pilots and passengers. We visited Honeywell in Phoenix, Arizona to see this tech at work. 3D representation of the airport in front of us. Now, there's no airliner out there that has this. There's no actually even uh, any airplane. This is all air 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 one, two, five, left. one. Rotate V2. This is no ordinary flight display. It's what Honeywell calls Smart View Synthetic Vision, or a virtual representation of the world outside the cockpit. Pulled from a database, terrain, runway information and obstacles are all shown on the pilot's primary flight display. So it's just the synthetic vision or the, the, you know, the computerized version of the terrain. And then we can turn on our infrared camera and you can see it starts to fill in details and it colorizes it to, to blend in nicely with the rest of it. It gives you, it's all about situational awareness. It's all about knowing where you are uh, with respect to terrain in this case, but also traffic. Small indicators like this arrow can help reorient a pilot if they bank the plane too far to one side. So this is 45 degrees of bank here. So I've got, got a recovery arrow that helps me know which way I need to roll back. So I'm going to just follow the arrow. It's amazing if they roll the wrong direction, they, you know, they push instead of pull. You can be overspeeding the airplane, over g the airplane faster than, than you'd probably anticipate. An extended centerline helps pilots land on the right runway with audible safety alerts when needed. 20. Except we've been working. 10. Once the plane is on the ground, 2D and 3D maps make it easier to navigate an unfamiliar airport, rather than just following the signs. Coming up to a taxiway like this, you could see it's hard to figure out which one is which. If you were given uh, clearance to go on Charlie 6, that's that one there, and it makes it easy for us to see. Y you can interpret that pretty darn easily, right? Yeah, it's easy for me to understand, and I've never flown a plane before. Right. It could even be possible for air traffic control to enter a taxi path for the pilot, then it automatically shows up on the display. Uh, that's where we're, uh, we're wanting it to go. Right now, those, the infrastructure doesn't necessarily exist for that, but we're set up for that. All these tools can help reduce a pilot's workload during the busiest flight periods of taxi, takeoff and landing. Synthetic Vision is already on some business jets from Gulfstream, but the first commercial jet to be certified should be the Embraer E2. Then it's up to the airline to adopt it. All right, here we go. One, 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 two, two, five, left. Left. Honeywell's also looking to develop technology that might remove the need for a runway altogether. This 280-pound megawatt generator is designed for vertical takeoff and landing to power flying cars. So the first application, or the, the application we're working on now, is for DARPA. We're teamed with Aurora Flight Sciences and uh, Rolls-Royce. Um, it's called the Lightning Strike Vehicle. Um, and uh, we're hopeful to get this technology mature enough by, the, by about the April-May time frame um, to, uh, to go off and then demonstrate that flight further down the road. This generator can support a vehicle carrying around five people. Engineers estimate around five to ten years before this technology is mature enough to be put into production. Before departure. Voice assistants are already in our homes and cars, but they're also coming to cockpits. Brakes, landing gear, it's all there. Yep. And understands Australian. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Pretty soon you can take off. <laughs> Excellent. Unlike Alexa, this pilot assistant won't respond to general questions. Pilots have to use a specific cockpit control language to minimize misunderstandings. As we build larger and larger vocabularies and put it into the neural nets, we can get up into, you know, maybe 10% word error rate, which is about 90% accuracy. It also has to work over loud cockpit and engine noise, which is simulated here in the test lab. So it's a little noisy in here. Yeah. Let's see if it still recognizes. So there's a button down here you can press. Oh, it's a button. Okay. Oh, noise cancelling. Yeah. That's much nicer. Okay. 
Wonderful. Let's try and see if it understands. Focus map. Yeah, it, it got it. Software is not the only tool that's being worked on at Honeywell. At the Additive Manufacturing Lab, engineers are making aircraft components cheaper, lighter and quicker than before. In some cases, a part that might take six months to make in a traditional cast process can now be produced in two weeks with 3D printing. Where we want to go with our additive product line is where you take multiple parts and assemble them in the printing process. So typically on a tube like this, you would take a tube, you would bend it, you would smash it here along this, and then weld this on and this on. But with additive, I can print them all as one homogenous part. For some components like this rear engine mount, the 3D printed version removes 62% of the weight. But because each part has to be approved by the FAA, this technology is currently used to print existing components. But testing is underway for new engines and concepts to reduce weight and fuel consumption. Potentially, all these developments could mean fewer flight delays, cancellations, and most importantly, accidents. Honeywell isn't the only company working on these technologies. Boeing and NASA are testing synthetic vision in 787 Dreamliner simulators. And voice control is also being trialed at another avionics company, Rockwell Collins. The flight deck of the future could be landing sooner than you think. Thank you.